Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks, and today I'm going to let you into a secret. I'm going to show you how you can use a completely undocumented, a completely hidden function in Excel, the date diff function. Now, legend has it that it was a function that originally was written in Lotus 1, 2, 3. For whatever reason, Microsoft Excel decided not to document it. However, they included it, albeit very hidden, to maintain compatibility with people who had originally created a spreadsheet in Lotus 123. For the date diff function, you will not find any help, so pay attention. Here's where you're going to get your help. Three required arguments, a start date, an end date, and a format code. Now, the start date must be an earlier date than the end date. If it's a later date, you're going to run into problems. You're going to get a formula error. Now, the format codes, there are six of them, and they must be included in double quotation marks. The first three are fairly standard. They're pretty much self-explanatory. The Y code will be the number of years between the start date and the end date. M, as you might suspect, the number of months between the start date and the end date, and D, the number of days between the start date and the end date. Now, the next three at the beginning are a little harder to understand. YM. What this means is it's going to calculate the number of months in the year between the months, between the start date and the end date. In other words, it's going to ignore the years. So YM will ignore the years. It will just give you the number of months, let's say between January and November, regardless of the year. Over here, YD will give you the number of days in the year. So if you started in an earlier year with YD, it will ignore the year. It will just tell me how many days have elapsed from the starting date in this year to the ending date in the same year. And the last one, MD, will ignore both the years and the months. Now, that's easier if you see this in practice. So let's come over here. I have a spreadsheet with length of employment. I have the same beginning date, the same hire date for each of the employees. And I've used the today function over here in column B. Now, the today function is a volatile function. It's an active function, meaning that it takes the date from your system clock. So tomorrow, when I open up this spreadsheet, the result will be November 24th. And here's the code. All right, we're ready to write our date diff function. Equals date diff. Now, remember, you will not get any help on this. So at this point where we reach typing in the function in left parentheses, we get no help whatsoever. I recommend that you write it in lowercase. If there's a problem, first look to see did the date diff function capitalize. If it didn't, then you type the function in incorrectly. All right, let's point to our start date. Now, remember, we separate arguments with a comma. Let's point to our end date and a comma for our third argument. Now, it must be included in double quotation marks. The case doesn't matter. Uppercase or lowercase, it does not matter. So now we see the result is 10. There are 10 years between the date hired and today's date. Now, let's just copy this down and make one modification. We'll change our code from Y to M. And this time, I'm going to capitalize it again. It does not matter. So 130 days have elapsed between the start date and today's date. And now let's copy this down once more, and we'll change our code. We'll change the code to D, and we can see 3,979 days. Now, let me give you a suggestion. To make this more understandable to your end users, I'm going to make a modification up here in the formula bar. I'm going to add the ampersand, which is the way we can join text to an existing formula. So ampersand, double quotation mark, space, years, the word years, double quotation mark. So there you see it's been 10 years since we were hired and today's current date. Now again, let's just copy this down. Let's make the modifications. Remember, we want to have months in here. And this time we'll change this text over here after the ampersand double quotation mark space to months. And well, it's again, let's just copy this down. We'll make those modifications. Over here, we'll change this to D. And over here, we'll change our text after the ampersand, double quotation mark, space, to days. All right, now, 
let's get into these codes. YM is going to look at the start date and the end date, but it's going to ignore the years. It's going to tell me how many months, in other words, in the current year. So let's come over here, equals date diff, left parentheses, start date, comma, end date, comma, double quotation mark, YM, double quotation mark, right parentheses. All right, now it's telling me that there are 10 months. So from January to November, 10 months. It's ignoring the year. So up here where we used M, 130 months from this actual year, here we're ignoring the years. We're just saying the pure number of months in between, the intervening number of months. Now let's make the modification down here for YD. And once again, let's just copy this down. So we'll just use our copy and we'll change this code to YD. So now with YD, what we're going to get is we're going to get the number of days in the current year. So this is the way I like to read it, D for days. How many days in the current year between the start date and the end date? And let's copy down for our final one. So now when we copy down here, we'll change the code to MD. And this is going to ignore both the months and the years. So in other words, how many days in the current month, regardless of the year between the start date and the end date. So between the first of the month and the 23rd of the month, 22 days. Between January and November, we have this many days over here. Okay, and then the number of months between January and November, 10 months. So we use the date diff function, three arguments. The start date must be an earlier date than the ending date. So for example, if I uh, reverse this, I had my end date and then my start date, I'm going to get an error over there. All right, so I'm obviously going to ignore that. So the start date must be earlier than the end date. And our third argument must be included in double quotation marks. There's six possible codes, YMD, YM, YD, and MD. And then we use the ampersand over here to make it easier to read. Ampersand, double quotation mark, space, and then the unit that we wish to, to, to measure. All right, so there you've seen how to use the date diff function. It's a very useful, very handy function. I find that I use it quite frequently. But don't look for it online for help. You won't find it. You'll only find it here on Danny Rock's Tips and Time Savers. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.